Hello, I'm Aaron Levy, CEO and co-founder of Box. Welcome to BoxWorks 2023. This is going to be our best BoxWorks ever. We have some incredible announcements in store for you today, including some new breakthrough announcements around Box AI. At Box, our mission is to power how the world works together. And we're incredibly honored and excited to be able to work with over 115 thousand companies globally, including 68% of the Fortune 500. We get to work with amazing organizations every single day that are leading the way in their industries. Everybody from Honda transforming the transportation industry, Airbnb that is revolutionizing hospitality, Morgan Stanley that is leading the way in digital financial services experiences, and Warner Music Group delivering amazing new entertainment and content to all of us every single day. What all of these businesses have in common is that content is at the very center of their business. In fact, content is your most important data. It's the, it's the data that powers all of our organizations. It's the lifeblood of our enterprise. It's the sales content that closes the next big deal that we're working on. It's the marketing asset that delivers an amazing new marketing campaign. It's the R&D data that allows us to have breakthrough new products. It's the legal documents that allow us to close those amazing breakthrough deals. It's the HR documents and content that let us onboard and train new employees. And it's the operational information that lets us deliver efficient supply chains. All of this content is powering how we work. The challenge is that the legacy approaches to managing this content are fundamentally broken. What we see in so many organizations is that our content is fragmented across a wide variety of technologies. This content is in legacy network file shares and document management systems, FTP sites. It's also in point solutions like e-signature products or collaboration tools. And all of this content fragmented across the organization means that it's incredibly hard to be productive. We don't know where our data is and we can't get our work done effectively. It also means that we're spending way too much on all of these redundant technologies in the organization. And so siloed, fragmented content presents massive challenges. But that's just the start. It also means we have major security and regulatory risks. In fact, when content is in silos, 96% of organizations don't know what data they actually have. And when you combine that with the fact that 65% of organizations reported a data breach in the past year, and the cost of a data breach is actually about four and a half million dollars to the average organization, we have a massive crisis on our hands. We have incredibly important intellectual property that's stored in lots of silos that we don't know anything about. We're dealing with major security risks that are impacting how our organizations operate. And we can't be productive with our data in all of these fragmented solutions. The good news is there's a better way. We know that there's a better way to manage the content that we have in the enterprise. Welcome to the content cloud. At Box, we are building the intelligent platform for managing the entire content journey. From the moment that we create new assets or ingest content into the cloud, to how we protect that content from ransomware or data leakage, the ability to classify this information from any type of event that might occur uh, from a compliance or regulatory standpoint, the ability to collaborate in real time in and outside of the enterprise with contractors and partners and colleagues, the ability to automate workflows and get invoices processed or contracts uh, delivered to our clients, and then get those contracts signed with native e-signature capabilities. The ability to publish content to teams and departments all around the organization, or the ability to analyze and get insights around how our data is being leveraged. And then finally, at the tail end of that process, being able to manage the set of documents and content for legal holds and document retention purposes. That is what the Box platform is delivering. And most importantly, we extend those capabilities and content securely into every application you're using, from Microsoft 365 to Google Workspace, to Slack and Salesforce and ServiceNow, to WebEx, Zoom, IBM, and every other technology in your enterprise. That is the power of the content cloud, a single source of truth for content connected up to all of your applications securely. 
And we've delivered a ton of innovation in the past year. Diego and Caroline in just a few minutes will go through some of those big updates that we've had. And what I'm so excited about is that we're just getting started. Even though we've built the leading content cloud for the enterprise, there is still so much more that we can do. And that is what we're here to talk about today. Because AI is driving a generational shift in how people work. We're already seeing this in our daily lives. When we think about how AI is impacting the, the way that we work as individuals, it's already shaping our everyday experience in an organization. We can automatically generate code to make writing code much faster. We can write emails and documents leveraging AI. We can create presentations or review documents and get expert analysis in our daily workflows. So AI is already having a major impact in our daily work and we're just at the very beginning of a completely new wave of transformation. But the bigger impact is when we connect that AI across our organization. This is when we're gonna be able to build products faster, support customers instantly, personalize marketing and tailor it to our customers, the ability to accelerate our supply chain and reduce business risk that we now see inside of the enterprise. And so AI is gonna have a massive impact in our individual productivity, but it's also gonna have an even greater impact in, in our organizational productivity. And nowhere is AI more powerful than with our enterprise content. When we can take the super intelligence that's trapped inside of these AI models and connect it up to our most important business data in a secure and compliant way. You know, when you think about it, about 10% of our enterprise data is structured information. This is the data that's inside of a database or a CRM system or an HR system. And we've always been able to query this data. We've been able to ask this type of information important questions. We've been able to run automatic workflows against this data. But we haven't been able to do that for the 90% of the information in the enterprise that is unstructured data. And this is what makes up all of our enterprise content. So AI is incredibly powerful because for the first time ever, we can begin to ask all of this type of data important questions. And so AI is going to revolutionize how we work with our enterprise content. It means in sales, we're gonna be able to get the right answer to a sales question to close a deal much faster. In marketing, we're gonna be able to automatically tailor marketing assets to customers automatically. In R&D, we're gonna be able to ideas leveraging the power of AI. In legal, we can quickly identify important clauses in a contract to reduce business risk. In HR, we can enable our employees to ask any type of question about the data that they have access to to answer critical questions to allow them to execute even better. And in operations, we can extract data from our content to be able to make our workflows more efficient and to make our businesses that much more productive. So AI is gonna fundamentally revolutionize how we work with all of our content and transform how we work across the entire enterprise. And this is why we've put AI at the very center of our platform. We have baked AI into the center of the content cloud. And this is gonna transform nearly every aspect of how we work with our content going forward. We're gonna be able to ask new kinds of questions of our data. We're gonna be able to pull out key insights from our information. We're gonna be able to use AI to help automatically drive new workflows. We can use AI to discover information across our entire organization. We can use AI to generate new types of content or use AI to improve security and data protection. AI is gonna have an impact in everything that we do with our content. And we're excited to reveal the start of how AI is going to be transforming the Box Content Cloud today. So to share a bit more about our overall product roadmap and strategy, as well as what we're doing with Box AI, I'd like to introduce you to Diego and Caroline. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, I'm Diego Dugatkin, Chief Product Officer. And I'm Caroline Shea, leading our product marketing team. Now, before I get into the vision of what we have for AI in the content cloud, let's take a step back. Shall we? 
<laughs> now we're ready to get started. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so let's take a look at the innovation that we deliver for customers and the outcomes we drive for them. Box is the content cloud, a single secure platform for the complete content lifecycle, enabling our customers to unlock the value of all their content from the moment a file is ingested or created to when it's edited, published, approved, signed, classified, and retained. With our platform, we've been able to drive transformational outcomes for all of our customers. For example, Broadcom, they've been able to migrate 18 million files from their product lifecycle management tool to Box and cut infrastructure costs by $10 million by eliminating those on-premise servers. JLL, who's focused on commercial real estate, empowers over 80,000 employees worldwide with a custom real estate app that they built on Box. With Box, JLL has been able to drive nine times faster asset creation, reducing time needed from three and a half hours to just 23 minutes. And lastly, Coalfire, their mid-sized cybersecurity org, and they migrated terabytes of content off of 6,000 SharePoint sites, streamlining customer-facing work and simplifying access to critical content. Our customers have been able to realize these amazing outcomes thanks to the Content Cloud, which we're constantly innovating on and enhancing. So Diego, can you share just what we did this past year? Yes, we have been innovating a ton and building upon all these products and capabilities across the Content Cloud. To pick a few, just in the past year, we've launched Box Canvas, which brings rich, interactive visual collaboration and whiteboarding directly into the Content Cloud. Using Canvas, Teams can run interactive meetings, sketch out plans, and build visual roadmaps. We also enhance Box Notes, our real-time collaborative editing tool that brings teams together with user-friendly content creation, formatting, and organization capabilities. Now, it's even easier for teams to draft documentation like SOP manuals, create project plans, or do code reviews. We also enriched Box Sign, our native e-signature solution offering unlimited signatures by adding advanced template capabilities and custom branding and enhancing extensibility via sign APIs and quite an expanded sign integration ecosystem. Also, you can't forget, we doubled down on Box Shield, which offers malware detection based on deep learning and advanced data leak protection to keep your content protected and secure. And we launched Box Shuttle, an easy migration tool straight from the admin console. Most importantly, no other platform helps you unlock the value of your content across more than 1,500 apps, including Microsoft, Salesforce, and Slack. No other platform is purpose-built to power seamless collaboration, no matter what tools people are using. And when it comes to building out the content cloud, the best is yet to come. OK, Diego, what exactly do we mean by that? Well, as we heard from Aaron, 90% of an organization's data is unstructured. It's last week's meeting notes, the images from the latest product catalog, the recording you downloaded. But what does unstructured mean? It means that it takes time and effort to parse and extract meaning from the data. And when over 90% of your data is unstructured, employees get overwhelmed and the problem is no longer addressable by human scale. This leaves all the potential value and insights in the data dark, underutilized, and untapped. A few months ago, we announced Box AI, a new suite of capabilities that will natively integrate advanced AI models into the content cloud. Now, unstructured data that used to take hundreds of hours to fully digest can now be easily tapped into with Box AI. And because that content is housed in Box, a single secure platform, you can leverage AI while maintaining Box's enterprise-grade security, compliance, and privacy. First, Box AI can help you derive insights instantly when previewing files on Box. Ask Box AI about the content you have in Box and get answers right away, from summarizing a document to uncovering key findings inside lengthy reports to getting answers to understand technical briefings. Second, with Box AI in Notes, you can create content in seconds, all with a simple prompt. Draft a press release, outline action items from meeting notes, generate personalized emails, or even write a blog post in a particular style. And you can do all of these things in seconds. With that, let's take a look at how Box AI works. The power of your content is astounding. It's the plans that shape cities, products that transform industries, contracts that close deals, and research that saves lives. What if you could unlock all that potential in an instant? We're amid a technology revolution 
where AI processing billions of files is making it possible. It's all pretty exciting. But to make intelligence work for your business, you need AI built right where your content lives, on the kind of platform only Box delivers. One that harnesses and protects the value of your content with enterprise-grade security, encryption, privacy, and compliance. Introducing Box AI. With the power of intelligence in the content cloud, you'll soon be able to summarize large amounts of information in seconds, surface business insights like key milestones and contracts, or clauses and terms that help you stay on track. Get answers by asking questions instead of searching. Find what you need faster, even within your most complex documents. Create and fine-tune new content, from report summaries to sales follow-ups, meeting agendas, and beyond. Bring teams together and get more value from your files with new AI-powered portals for curating and publishing content. And do it all while keeping your content and your business safe and secure. The AI revolution is just beginning and new technologies will emerge faster each day. You need a content platform that empowers you to move just as fast. After all, your content is your most important data. And with Box AI, the future of your content is now. Wow, wasn't that exciting? Now, I bet you're wondering when you can start using it. Well, we are thrilled to share that Box AI, to ask questions of files and in Box Notes, will be available in beta later this fall. But we're just getting started with Box AI. We're building artificial intelligence into the core of the content cloud, so you can enhance and augment all the content processes in your business with the power of AI. As we announced, to power proactivity and collaboration, Box AI will now speed up content consumption provide immediate insights, and supercharge content creation and iteration. And in the future, Box AI will help keep you more secure, classifying documents automatically based on the sensitivity of their content, and then applying the right security and retention policies at scale. Box AI will also help orchestrate workflows, generate documents for metadata, make intelligent recommendations for signers and approvers, and then retain those documents once they're signed. All of that is part of our vision for AI, but today we're excited to make two announcements for Box AI. With Box AI, you will soon be able to ask intelligent queries across multiple pieces of content to gain new insights about the business. Now, I don't want to give too much away, as you will hear the details in a minute, but this is all part of our new revolutionary approach to collecting, organizing, and distributing source of truth content. And second, Box AI content services will soon be available as developer tools so you can extend all the AI capabilities of your content in your enterprise, no matter where it's being housed. The Box Content Cloud is the only secure, intelligent platform for the entire content journey. And today, you'll hear about our exciting announcements around Box AI and across the Content Cloud. OK, Diego, I'm getting a little bit excited. So what is our first announcement? Well, we'll hand it to our Productivity Product team to tell us more. And if you haven't guessed it by now, our announcement is going to leverage Box AI. So take it away, teams. Hello, I'm Larissa Palika, Staff Product Marketing Manager for Collaboration. And I'm Steve Chu, Director of Product Management. As enterprises, we've embraced diverse technologies, adapted to new ways of collaborating, and become increasingly data-driven, all while keeping a security-first mindset and ensuring our most important data, our content, is protected, private, and compliant. When it comes to work, there's one thing we can be sure of. Change is the only constant. As organizations try to tackle the changing nature of work, three key productivity and collaboration challenges have emerged. The first, app sprawl. Workplaces average about 187 apps, not including the unsanctioned ones. And more isn't always better. There's a point at which the number of apps a worker uses begins to slow them down instead of helping them get their work done. With too many apps, information is siloed, work is much more complex, 
content is duplicated, and collaboration, well, it's inefficient. The second, content distribution. Content is your enterprise's most important asset, but is it making it into the right hands at the right time? As more data is being produced, companies need a way to effectively share key content across their organizations. And finally, ensuring teams have the right skills for new ways of working, whether that be with AI or other collaboration tools. At Box, our goal has always been to bring value to our customers through the power of the content cloud. And collaboration is what we do best. It's in our DNA. That means being able to preview and share documents in CoreBox, brainstorm or whiteboard in Box Canvas, create project plans in Box Notes, analyze engagement in Content Insights, and much, much more. To meet the productivity challenges that enterprises are facing today, Box is delivering collaboration tools that are simple yet feature rich, easy to use yet powerful and that deliver a cohesive experience. Tools that allow your teams to do more directly in Box, eliminating complexity and helping to reduce costs. And with the future of work becoming increasingly AI powered, Box AI will be infused across all our collaboration tools. So before our big reveal, let's provide a little more context. The amount of data enterprises produce is growing exponentially. And this growth is showing no signs of slowing. The side effect of all this data growth, your employees are struggling. 62% say they're spending too much time, almost two hours per day, searching for information while at work. And organizations are struggling too because keeping employees, teams aligned around critical source of truth content has never been harder. The result, frustration, decreased productivity, and confusion, all of which are costly to your business. But there is a better way, and that's why we're extremely excited for this announcement. So drum roll, please. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. That's right. We're thrilled to announce Box Hubs, intelligent portals to help you surface great content quickly and securely. Soon, you'll be able to use Box Hubs to enable your team with a single place to find sales materials, create a brand library to house all of your enterprise's design assets, or spin up a hub for your next big product launch. And you can do all this directly in Box, ensuring that all this great content is available to the teams who need it across your organization. So I'll pass it over to Steve for all the juicy details. Thanks, Marissa. That's right. With Box Hubs, we've reimagined the way content is curated, organized, and published by breaking it free from folder hierarchies into secure, easy to use intelligent portals. And we've added Box AI to power content generation, summarization, and most importantly, multi-document interpretation. So think of hubs as a compass for your content. Without guidance, it might take in-depth searching or relying on others' expertise to help find what you need. But with Box Hubs, you have a reliable navigator that has collected and pointed you directly at the crucial content you need to move your work forward. So let's see Box Hubs in action. You're working with all kinds of amazing content. And as incredible as all this content is, it's much more valuable when it's right within reach and easily published for teams and partners that need it. Introducing Box Hubs. Get ready for a new level of simplicity with secure, intelligent portals that give everyone the context they need to quickly find and make sense of their most valuable asset, AKA your content. That was awesome. But I'm sure you're wondering, how does it all work? So with a click of a button, I can create and customize a brand new hub. Wait a minute, I don't need any help to set up a hub? That's right, Larissa. Box users can set up hubs on their own without bugging their admin or requesting costly IT resources. And then they can add any piece of content or folder from Box to the hub, creating an easy to skim content playlist. Think Spotify, but for the latest marketing assets, account plans, or sales reports. And because hubs links to the content and doesn't move it, the same piece of content can be added to multiple hubs reducing content sprawl and ensuring there's only one version 
all while maintaining the security, compliance, and permissions you expect. Finally, the hub can be saved, published, and shared across the entire company or with just select teammates. So let's follow our friends at Acme Corp and see how they are using Box Hubs to inform and align their teams around their content. In the Hubs Gallery, Acme employees can see all of the hubs that they have access to. Each tile represents a hub with the imagery and description, providing critical details about its contents. Hubs help to create a cohesive and collaborative way to relay source of truth information about everything from the company and its policies to product roadmaps and even individual projects. Next, the Acme Human Resources team has set this hub to centralize workplace information such as policies, onboarding materials, and benefits information. The HR Hub editor can customize the look and feel of the hub with images, descriptions, and multiple sections, add PDFs, videos, and more from anywhere in Box with just a few clicks, while also being able to link content housed outside of Box. So think of this hub as the internal gateway that provides employees with self-service access to essential company information. Not only does the hub reduce the workload of the, the HR team, but it also breaks the content out of silos by minimizing the emails and questions. In our next example, marketing has created a sales enablement hub where Acme's customer facing teams can get up to speed with the tools and training needed to delight customers and most importantly, grow revenue. With hubs, the sales team can easily find and tailor materials to their specific clients while the marketing team can measure engagement and performance of their assets with built-in insights. Insights make hub and file level performance visualizations available at a glance, so teams can focus on action instead of analysis. Hubs can help surface great content to collaborators inside and outside your org. Share a hub like any other item in Box, either via email or a link. Here, we see Acme teams collaborating with an outside agency on a social campaign for their latest product. And because Hubs respects Box's security protocols, if classified content is accidentally added to a hub, only those with access will be able to view that file. Steve, I'm sold. I can't wait to start using Hubs. It's really going to help me with my next product launch. And as mentioned, I think we've talked a lot about Box AI. We've infused Box AI into our collaboration tool set, and it will boost productivity by making it easier to derive insights for decision making or to accelerate business growth. So how is Box AI being infused into hubs? That's a great question, Larissa. Box Hub has been deeply integrated with Box AI, and it can be conveniently accessed from the hub search bar. With Box AI Powered Search, we take a huge leap forward by adding speed, scale, and most importantly, relevance. Looking for a particular document? Our powerful engine will route your query to search. But if you really want to dig in and understand complex concepts across the curated contents of a hub, you can ask Box AI any question and receive authoritative AI-generated answers, such as summaries, information analysis, and more right away. So think of Box AI as your newest collaborator, a supercharged AI teammate who reads and processes information a thousand times faster, who can provide insight into multiple documents collected in a hub, insight that would have normally taken hundreds of hours to obtain. And so I know we could talk all day about Box Hubs and AI, but let's see how everything comes together in this demo. Acme Corp, a global technology company, is releasing their new DataCrate product. Let's see how the marketing and sales teams use Box Hubs and Box AI to distribute and unlock the value of their content simply and efficiently. Our story begins with Tyler, the marketing manager. He needs to make sure the most up-to-date, relevant product launch content makes it into the hands of the entire sales organization. Tyler can achieve this with Box Hubs. In the Box Hubs gallery, he can see all the hubs that he has access to. He selects the Sales Enablement Hub, where all of Acme Corp's key sales assets and resources are organized, managed, and published. Tyler's permissions for this hub are set to Editor, so he's able to update it to add new sections, content, and images, and then save and publish it. He creates a new section for DataCrate with a description and topics that he's able to customize however he needs. 
He's also easily able to add callout boxes, which provide additional details for the other users of the hub. Box Hubs makes it easy for Tyler to publish his content no matter what file type or where it lives in Box. He can populate each section of his hub with demo videos, product presentations, PDFs, Box canvases, and more. He's not moving files, meaning there won't be version control challenges when the content is updated. The updates will reflect in the hub automatically. Ultimately, Tyler is making it simple for his sales organization to have access to the latest, most up-to-date content. With these content playlists, it will be easy for his stakeholders to skim the content and find what they need to get their jobs done. Tyler is also able to add internal-only resources, which he's been accessing through his project planning hub. Content can easily be added to more than one hub. Plus, Box Hubs respects the existing Box Shield classifications. Since these internal resources are classified as internal only, Tyler can be confident that these files will stay protected, even when included in his hub. Satisfied, Tyler saves and publishes the hub, knowing these changes will take effect instantly. Now that he's updated the sales enablement hub, Tyler is excited to announce the launch to the sales team. Working in Box Notes, Tyler asks Box AI to quickly draft the internal product launch email. Box AI leverages existing product details and benefits to instantly draft the email. Because he is using Box AI, Tyler can be confident that his proprietary product details are safe and secure. Box AI does not learn off of his content or questions. After just a few updates, Tyler is able to send it off. Now let's move over to Valentina, a sales account executive. She's just received the DataCrate launch email. She is preparing for a prospect meeting and this new product just might close the deal. Valentina opens the sales enablement hub. Since her hub permissions are set to viewer, she sees all the sales resources she can access, but she isn't able to edit the hub. Valentina easily navigates to the data crate materials. Since it's in the hub, she knows this is the most up-to-date, accurate information. Valentina needs to get up to speed on data crate quickly. From the search bar, she asks Box AI to concisely describe the product and its benefits. Because her question is directed at all of the content curated in the hub, Box AI is able to pull information from multiple files at once and create a summary. With Box AI, Valentina has a lot of power at her fingertips. She could ask Box AI any number of questions, including comparing specific files, identifying key information, or drafting content based on the hub. Next, she asks Box AI to identify the top three resources for prospective purchasers and to create one sentence summaries for each of them. Thanks to Box AI, Valentina has a good understanding of the new product. She's excited to share it with her customer, Increo. Increo has a large committee evaluating new technology, so Valentina created a Box Hub where she can organize, manage, and share materials with the Increo team. In addition to the public assets, Valentina accidentally adds an internal-only file to the hub. But since her hub respects Box's classifications, the customer will not be able to view that file. Valentina lets her customer know there are new materials in the hub. Later, she checks the hub insights. She can see that many of the assets have been viewed, but that the demo video she added is performing best. With Intelligent Box Hubs, Valentina quickly learned about the new product, securely shared details with her customer, and gained valuable insight into the status of her relationship with the customer, all without leaving Box. And that's a wrap on Acme Corp. With Box, Acme's marketing and sales teams were able to launch their new product efficiently, both with internal organizations and external teams. Thanks for following along. Wow, what a great demo. Box Hubs and Box AI, they really are the dream team. But these are just our newest ways to work together in Box. Our collaboration tools are extremely powerful, especially when used together cross-functionally throughout your entire organization. So imagine that your marketing team is preparing for a user conference, much like this one. With Canvas, you can brainstorm ideas for the conference themes and visualize the flow of the event schedule. With Notes, you can plan work streams and draft session content in real time with your teammates or on your own using Box AI. And now with Hubs, you can create an intelligent, centralized portal to publish event assets like the conference agenda, speaker bios, session videos to the broader organization. 
With insights, you can see how your event hub and the individual assets are performing. And with Box AI-powered collaboration tools, employees across your organization could ask questions and get answers about the conference hub. They could summarize individual files like the agenda, and they could draft a customized invitation to their key clients instantly. Plus, all of this productivity goodness is supported by the innate collaboration powers in Box. Previewing, sharing, commenting, and more. So when will it all be available? As Diego mentioned, Box AI and Notes and the ability to ask questions of your files will be available in beta in the fall of 2023. And mark your calendars, Box Hubs will be available in beta early next year. In addition to these exciting new Box native experiences, our teams have been working on delivering enhancements across our partner ecosystem. Can you tell us more, Steve? I'd be happy to, Larissa. If you're focused on driving productivity, which is all of us, then you know that half the battle is creating a single source of truth for your content, making the user experience seamless and secure. Let me show you what we've done in the last year to amplify your content's reach across your entire tech stack. We connected box folders to Slack channels and Salesforce objects, then linked them all together so that teams can seamlessly work between both. We added box notes directly in Teams and enabled real-time desktop co-authoring across Microsoft 365 apps, like PowerPoint and Word, with all the edits automatically being saved back to Box. We also updated our Google Workspace add-on, which lets users attach Box files directly to Google Calendar Meetings. And I've heard from tons of customers who are excited about our addition of native Box capabilities like Box Sign into our integrations. I love all that product news, and it's about to get even better. With Box as the single unifying content layer, customers will be able to unlock the value of their unstructured data and accelerate their business by leveraging generative AI, either with Box AI, our partner's AI, or a combination of both. Here are a few examples. Last month, in a closed pilot demo at Dreamforce, we showcased this unified approach using Box AI and Salesforce Einstein GPT to streamline document ingestion and validation while helping up-level workers to navigate complex application and review processes. And we've been gathering feedback on this and are excited to continue innovating with partner AI and bringing Box AI into pre-built partner integrations. And next year, we're bringing Box AI to Slack so you don't have to dig through files while chatting with your coworkers. Instead, get answers fast using Box AI and receive your answer directly in Slack. And rest assured, Box AI's reliable response only pulls from where you tell it to, your enterprise content. And last but not least, we're bringing Box for Microsoft 365 Copilot, making it easy for our joint customers to use AI to power their Box content through interactions with Microsoft 365 apps, starting with Teams. Wow, Larissa. These innovations will really bring efficiency and collaboration together for our customers and help them unlock their content's hidden value. Now let's pivot to hear about how Box Platform APIs will empower developers to create custom solutions and leverage Box AI. Hi everyone, my name is Ketan Kittur and I'm the VP of Platform and Integrations at Box. And I'm Sally Lee, Product Marketing for Platform. We're super excited to be here and share all the things we've been working on. Today, Box APIs allow you to extend Box to other applications to meet your business's unique needs while maintaining content security and compliance requirements. Think of yourself as the chef, and we provide the best quality ingredients. What you cook is up to you and what your customers want. I like that analogy, Sally. The value we deliver uh, to our customers can be boiled down to four usage patterns. Number one, automations help reduce manual work for repetitive tasks such as bulk user provisioning or assigning users to legal holds, for example. Number two, integrations centralize your third-party application content within Box. Number three, front office enablement simplifies collaboration with Box as the content layer for your organization. And number four, external experiences through white labeling box for collaboration purposes. Customers have built custom portals 
for wealth management or client onboarding using our UI elements. There are tons of possibilities here. As an example, USAA built a secure portal that streamlined their entire insurance claims processes and decreased claims processing time from weeks down to minutes. And to help you find new use cases within these patterns, we have a robust portfolio of APIs and developer tools. We pride ourselves in being an API first company and prioritize the development and integrations of APIs into our products and services. This past year, we launched API enhancements to Shield, Slack integration, sign templates for embedding the sign experience in custom applications to just name a few. Our goal is to make it easy for you and your developers to build integrations and custom applications from the ground up. All of this sets a strong foundation for building the right solution for your organization and sets you up to leverage the latest technologies like AI. We know that all enterprises have unique needs. So in order to bring AI to your organization, you need a flexible and secure solution that is built with content at the center. Earlier, you heard the exciting news about how users can leverage AI natively within the Box web app using hubs, notes, and preview. But it doesn't stop there. We are pleased to announce the Box AI API so that you can leverage all of these new web app capabilities within your custom applications as well. Specifically, we'll be releasing the AI API tools for developers to support text generation, Q&A within a single and multiple documents, and summarization capabilities. What's special about the Box AI API is that it's built with content at the core and maintains security, privacy, and compliance requirements. So as long as your content is already in Box, you can leverage the API to tap into that content in third-party and custom applications with a peace of mind. We take care of the hard stuff so you and your developers can focus on building applications that drive your business forward. And our AI API can power a variety of use cases. For example, you can leverage the API to automatically generate key takeaways from important business documents. Let's say your job is to analyze revenue growth for the past few years. Instead of looking through each year's report to get the key insights, the Box AI API can help you find what's most important within each report, connect the dots between the reports, and generate key takeaways that summarize all of these reports together. So you can tell in the past three years what is your most profitable product and what the key drivers of growth were. Now, this is where the flexibility of the API comes in. You can surface these key takeaways all across your enterprise infrastructure. These can be in content portals, like internal finance portal used to make budgeting decisions, or marketing portals for crafting new campaigns. You can also feature these insights in chats like Slack and Microsoft Teams, emails, or even as metadata. There's really no limits, right? That's right. And here's another use case for you. But first, let me start off with a fun fact. Did you know that an average RFP proposal contains 77 questions? and each question takes 25 minutes to answer. Wow, that's a day and a half. Exactly. For those of you who have had to work on an RFP, I'm sure you're not too surprised by these numbers and wish there was something you can do to get that time back. Good news is that your developers can leverage the Box AI API to build an RFP uploader, which can automatically populate RFPs by referencing previously completed RFPs. And what's cool is that the AI API isn't just limited to RFPs. You can apply this concept to other documents, such as SOC 1 or SOC 2 reports, annual reports, and even IP filings. That's awesome. And you can also bring the API to your custom portal experiences, like for your sales teams. They typically have to spend a lot of time sifting through files, preparing for a customer meeting. With the AI API working behind the scenes, you can select multiple files, ask a question about them, and instantly receive an answer that also points to the relevant source documents. This makes your sales teams a lot more efficient so they can focus more on the customer interactions instead of being buried deep in files. And a lot of you may already have internal sales portals. So now you can easily build in these new AI capabilities. For our next announcement, we are adding Box AI to the preview UI element. UI elements allow you to embed the Box UI within your custom applications. Your content is still within Box, and the UI element gives you the ease and flexibility 
to display the box UI wherever your external collaborators might interact with your content. With this new capability, you can get the power of AI within your existing portals. Your clients can ask questions of their files and get answers right away. This is a differentiator for improving the client experience within wealth management portals. Stay tuned for the demo since we'll be diving into this particular use case. AI not only powers collaboration and productivity, but it can also streamline business processes like metadata. So that's why we're thrilled to also announce Box AI for metadata extraction, coming to you first via API, which will allow you to easily apply metadata to even more of your files. After opening up metadata for a file, you can choose to automatically populate the metadata suggestions for the specific fields. Afterwards, all you need to do is confirm the suggestions before saving the results. Metadata extraction can be helpful for difficult to understand documents, such as legal contracts, and help extract fields for something the user might not be an expert in. This can also be extremely useful for those files where there is a lot of data entry involved, like invoices. And it would save a lot of time for analysts who could be focusing on other value-add work instead. All of these APIs and developer tools are underpinned by the Box developer experience, which includes comprehensive documentation, sample code catalog, and active community forums. So whether you are new to coding or an expert developer, you can confidently get started with these cool new AI features, especially when the AI API comes to beta next spring. We can't wait to see what you build on Box. And now let's see some of the new AI features we mentioned in action. Let's visit Golden Blue, a growing wealth management company. They have an existing wealth portal built with Box APIs and developer tools where clients and advisors work together. Let's take a look at how Golden Blue improved their wealth portal and their client relationships with the Box AI API. Meet Clio, a Golden Blue client. Clio logs into the Wealth Portal and sees a new document for her to view. She opens the quarterly portfolio report. It's lengthy, 20 pages. With the Box AI in preview UI element built into the portal, Clio can ask questions about the report and get answers instantly. She asks the file to share the rate of return for her portfolio, 25%. Box AI makes it easy for Golden Blue's clients to get information quickly, improving the overall client experience. Next, Clio asks for a summary of any new investment activities. She can quickly see that there is a new investment in her portfolio. Clio is impressed with Golden Blue and decides to look into additional services they offer. From the Wealth Portal, she chats with her advisor, Adam. Clio was interested in Golden Blue's retirement services and requests additional information from Adam before making a decision. In the background, the Box AI API summarizes this conversation and connects with an email integration to send Clio a summary for follow-up. Box AI allowed Clio to easily access key information about her finances without having to read through lengthy documents. Let's take a look at how Golden Blue is using Box AI to help Clio's advisor, Adam, work more effectively. To work best with his client, Clio, Adam needs to get quick insight into her financial details. He has a lot of documents for each client, but luckily with Box AI, it's easy for Adam to ask questions regarding a selection of files within the folder. Box AI will look through the selected documents and find answers to his questions. It can find specific numbers, like Clio's tax return information, it can also summarize details from multiple documents at once, such as preferences and risk profiles. Plus, Box AI respects permissions, so Adam is only able to ask questions of documents that he is entitled to view. Finally, if Adam wants to read through the information as it is written in the source file, Box AI makes it easy to do so. With the Box AI API, Adam can get answers quickly, increasing his output removing the busy work of searching through numerous files for quick insights, and never compromising on the security of his client's data. Finally, Adam needs to validate that Clio's personal information is up to date. He sees that a recent bank statement has been updated. The Box AI API for metadata automatically extracted metadata from that statement and populated the information into the system. 
Atom no longer needs to manually copy information over to the system, thanks to Box. Now let's take a brief look behind the scenes and see how Golden Blue was able to quickly incorporate AI into their existing application. Box provides comprehensive API documentation, as well as easy access to SDKs and sample code, which made it simple to build in AI capabilities like Q&A, text generation, and metadata capabilities for both single and multiple documents. Plus, with an active developer community forum, Golden Blue's developers can quickly get answers to any question they have related to leveraging Box APIs, AI and otherwise. And there you have it. Golden Blue was able to quickly improve both external client and internal advisor experiences by adding AI into their wealth portal. By leveraging the Box AI API, Golden Blue allows its clients to get quick insights from their files and its advisors to simplify workflows by finding information quickly. Plus, with automatic metadata extraction, manual tasks are automated, allowing employees to focus on what matters on client relationships. Hi, I'm Ben Kuss, Chief Technology Officer at Box. We've seen how Box AI powers productivity, including text generation capabilities, answering questions on single and multiple files, plus how Box AI can be leveraged for third-party or custom applications. But with the rapid evolution of AI, this is just the beginning. Since we know that 90% of data in an organization is unstructured, it's very clear that most companies will be looking at AI to extract valuable insights from their content. And with the power of generative AI, there's a lot of technology options that would let you do this with either custom-built or off-the-shelf tools. However, with any application that accesses content, you have to be keenly aware of the security controls. And with AI, you have additional concerns, like how do permissions work? What are the controls on model training? What are the protections against leaking sensitive data? These questions are critical to avoid disastrous situation where AI itself causes data leakage. This is why we built these principles into the Box AI architecture from the very beginning. Box AI uses existing Box controls to ensure that you can use AI with enterprise-grade security and strict granular access controls while isolating the model so they cannot leak the data. To do this, we have created the Box AI platform. The way it works is that when a query is made on the document, including all the queries that you saw in previous examples, the AI platform first checks permissions to ensure the user has access to this content. Then, the most important data related to your query is extracted using multiple techniques, including vector embeddings. After that, the AI platform will augment the data to reduce hallucinations, including any custom instructions, and will ensure the AI gives the most accurate answer to the query. From there, the data is sent to the AI model, and then the response is returned to the user. Best of all, with the AI platform, you'll be able to standardize controls and technology for applying AI on your content, ensuring that you can use AI safely and securely. And this not only works on text-based documents. We'll continue to evolve the power of the AI platform to support different file types, including multimodal content, audio video files, images, and semi-structured data like Excel files and Google Sheets. Now, one of the most critical aspects of the Box AI platform is that it allows model flexibility. We will select the models that are best fit for different use cases, but we will provide the capability to change the model to bring in a custom trained model or a fine tuned model that supports your specific needs. We know that different organizations will have different needs for customization and administration. So with the Box AI platform, you will have the complete visibility and control and a bird's eye view over how your enterprise is using AI. With AI access controls, you'll be able to monitor and report on your organization's AI usage for compliance purposes. And in the future, you'll be able to select from curated set of off-the-shelf models and see how the answers to your queries might differ when making those selections. You'll also be able to designate custom instructions, for instance, instructing your model to answer in certain styles, or never answer specific types of questions, such as legal and medical questions. Finally, from this unified console, you'll be able to build, test, and deploy your own intelligent apps to embed the power of Box AI in existing experiences. And of course, our AI platform will implement and respect our AI principles, which demonstrate our commitment to control, privacy, and transparency in this rapidly changing AI landscape. As you've seen, nowhere is AI more powerful than with your content. And Box is the platform for future-proofing your AI content strategy. And with that, let's bring it back to Diego. Wow, amazing to hear about the Box AI platform and how AI is built 
into the core of the content cloud, powering productivity and extensibility. Box is the AI content platform for future-proofing your AI content strategy. As the team said earlier, Box AI in our productivity tools, with the ability to ask questions of files, generate content in Box Notes, and intelligent Box Hubs, will be available in beta soon. But I have even more exciting news. We want to make it super simple for you to use Box AI. So how can you get it? Box AI capabilities will be available to all our customers on the Enterprise Plus plan. The plan includes queries for your individual users and a shared pool for the entire enterprise so you can leverage AI to get more value from your content. You'll also have the flexibility to add more queries for those higher scale projects. Now, these Box AI capabilities are on top of everything in our Enterprise Plus package today, which includes the unlimited signatures of Box Sign, the security features of Box Shield, retention and legal holds in Box Governance, and much more. And also coming next year, we're adding capabilities to address any needs for customization and advanced administration of AI, like the ability to select from curated set of models, bring your own AI model, customize your prompts, and more. Now let's join Aaron in extending a very warm welcome to our featured speaker at the center of this AI revolution, industry leader Sam Altman from OpenAI. All right, welcome back. I am here with Sam Altman, the CEO and co-founder of OpenAI, amongst many other uh, roles and responsibilities you've had over the years, but obviously- And a very old friend, since and, we were like kids. And very old, very old friend. Actually, uh, I'm sure we'll edit this out, but um, basically the first or second person I met in Silicon Valley. So um, it, was, uh, it was hugely inspiring going to the global headquarters of Looped um, uh, in, uh, was it Palo Alto or Mountain View? Would, where would we, where would um, we classify that? Okay. Um, so, uh, so those were those were the days before all this crazy AI and uh, technology taking over the world. Um, so, uh, so welcome, Sam, and uh, and good to have you here. Um, would love maybe just the a little bit of the just reminder of the origin story of OpenAI. I think when you first uh, had the idea, at least even when I heard about it, it was like, holy crap! Like, like, can we actually do? Is AI really going to be this? Is it going to work? And I'm sure you had a lot yeah. of doubters and people not really understanding how you guys were going to pull this off. So we'd love the, the origin story of, of how we got to where we are today. We kind of believed that it seemed well over the line of promising enough to be worth trying. So we weren't sure we were going to succeed, but we were sure that if we succeeded, it'd be super valuable. And we thought that success seemed plausible. We, we had a belief, uh, like a big picture belief, uh, which was that if we scaled up deep learning, something great might happen. And then we had, you know, some like wandering along the way, but we did figure out something that did work. Uh, but like fundamentally, the recipe was like very much like other Silicon Valley or tech industry success stories, which is like deep conviction in something enabled by technology that gets better with scale and cluster a lot of talented people with the same belief together. And was there something going on? Because this was before the Transformer paper. Um, how, wh wh what was the, why was this the moment that you felt like, okay, it was time to do a real AI lab and, and we actually, like, the stars aligned to make this possible? I think if we had really been on it and paying attention, we could have started even earlier. I think 2012 was the year of the Alex Net paper. And that should have woken everybody up. But people hold on to their biases pretty, pretty strongly. And, uh, you know, we had all been like poisoned by AI winter for too long, but that was, that should have been like very clear in retrospect. And then the following years from that was just like triumph after triumph of making neural networks bigger. What was the first moment when, uh, when you really felt like, you know, the open AI team was on to something that was on this path toward AGI? Uh, well, definitely the Dota two project where we did like a reinforcement learning effort to beat expert humans at Dota 2. That was like really quite impressive. That was one moment. And then GPT-2 plus the scaling laws was another moment. Yeah. That was the first time I went from saying like, well, these networks get bigger, better with scale to they get predictably better with scale. And that felt like, like a deep secret of the universe. And then the breakthrough from GPT-2 and understanding scaling laws to GPT-3 and then ultimately 3.5 was that like, did you have to re-architect anything? Like what caused, what was the set of events that led to, to three and three five? 
Uh, like applying a lot of effort. <laughs> okay. There's like a lot, there was like scientific discovery. There was like a lot of engineering. We had to like figure out how to wrap up more servers, convince people to like give us the money to pay for it. There were a lot of things that went into it. But at that point we like knew what to do. And then, you know, the, I think, you know, everybody has a pretty good sense of, of uh, you know, some of the, the lineage of, of the models and how we got here. But uh, the ChatGPT both interface and the, uh, the, the, you know, the interaction, you know, UX paradigm that you guys landed on and then the model itself how did that come to be? Did you know that you were sitting on this this sort of huge breakthrough moment? I mean, basically everybody tuning in right now, you know, thousands and thousands of, of CIOs, uh, exactly one year ago, they were just we were all just going along our merry way, um, you know, building yeah. building software. Uh, you know, a month later, uh, you launch ChatGPT, the world explodes. Everybody's product roadmap is completely altered. Everybody's you know entire vision for the future of work is altered. Uh, did you know what you were creating and and kind of setting setting loose in the world? I was pretty sure, but I also believe that like no amount of testing ever quite replaces reality. And so, you know, you can feel good about it, but you never really know until you put it out into the world. And what, I thought so. Yeah, what, what you were thought so because you were using it internally and it was coming up with interesting answers or like what, what, what was happening? Well, definitely that, uh, but also like, I'd been, I was like, you know, grew up as like a sci-fi nerd. And I also had been thinking more and more about this evolution of computer interfaces over time and the sort of the trend towards increased, increasing like naturalness of interaction. And both of those things pointed towards what you really want is to talk to the computer like you talk to a person with all of the subtlety of language. Right. But uh, any reason why we hadn't seen that at GPT-2 then? Like what was the breakthrough? Well, it just wasn't good enough. Uh, it, it, the, the model has to get like good enough to get over some sort of threshold where you're mostly not frustrated trying to use it this way. Got it. Okay. So we had to figure out something at scale. Like we had to figure out how to do enough RLHF to get it to like follow instructions and, you know, be good at talking to you. But, but it just like GPT two technically was definitely not good enough. Yeah. 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 So, um, okay, so we're now almost a year in. Uh, basically, the entire world has, has used ChatGPT, heard about ChatGPT. I mean, it's one of these technologies where, like, once you know your uncles and aunts and moms and, and parents and cousins and nephews have all used it, like, that's a, that's a pretty groundbreaking moment. Yeah. Um, where are you seeing the, the product go next? Uh, there's been some recent releases. We've seen Dolly 3, pretty, pretty incredible use case. Um, uh, yeah. uh, you know, one of the leading ways to generate uh, AI images. There's a new vision component uh, that, that you know, has computer vision applied um, to, uh, to, to uh, the ChatGPT interface. Um, wh where do we see this uh, kind of assistant-like chat uh, interface going in the future? You've launched plugins. Can you walk us through a little bit of that vision? You know, definitely multimodality people. That's, as you mentioned, we've done that recently. People people want that. Clearly, people want better tool use. You know, they want ChatGPT integrated into whatever else they're, they're doing and the ability to, like, go off and call APIs and whatever. But the kind of things I think about are people want, like, a smarter model, including better at reasoning. They want a more reliable model. It does what they want more often on the first try. doesn't hallucinate and make up shit unless they're asking for it. Um, and they want a more personalized model and you know, they want something that's got their context, whatever way they want to share it. Um, and I kind of think those are the three areas that we're feeling the most pull from the market to try to excel in and very aligned with our roadmap. So we'll get better on all of those. And then of course, people always want it to be like cheaper and faster. Yeah. 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 Uh, which we'll get into because um, speaking for enterprises, um, I think the use cases dramatically exceed even in some cases, the, the amount of compute we have available to solve these use cases, so so we'd love to understand some of the scaling laws. Um, maybe just when just just one more click on this. Um, do you see a future where we're interacting with either ChatGPT or some other manifestation, and it's performing actions that ultimately go and touch the real world? Um, so not just pulling information, but performing behaviors. You know, getting you the 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 flight booked or yeah. um, getting the the, uh, the 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 reservation you know accomplished. Um, and what what does that roadmap sure. look like? I don't know when that'll happen, but clearly people want that. Uh, the models need to get more reliable than they are right now before that can happen, but definitely people want that. So on the enterprise front, uh, this is, um, you know, certainly this is the theme of our event this year. It's the theme of every, you know, enterprise software conference, obviously on the planet, uh, and has been, you know, probably singularly the, 
maybe most rapidly um, uh, adopted um, in terms of testing and, and experimentation, um, rapidly, um, I think, talked about technology I've seen in you know, the nearly you know, two decades of enterprise software. Um, even cloud, it was like three to five years of just people even understanding how we would use you know, cloud in like a dev test environment. Mobile obviously took multiple iterations of you know Blackberries and then iPhone, um, but uh, but this sort of you know quote unquote you know ChatGPT moment has rippled through everybody. Um, uh, I think we're we're seeing a lot of uh, experimentation and even uh, early stages of kind of production ready development um, on OpenAI models right now in the enterprise. Um, uh, we ourselves uh, even today are announcing all new capabilities uh, built on uh, GPT 3.5 um, with uh, with some kind of allusion to how we will do uh, GPT-4 in the future. Um, so quite a, quite a lot of enterprise usage. What do you see as the enterprise strategy here? Um, how should, if you're a developer you know, listening in right now, how should we be thinking about OpenAI um, and, uh, and the developer ecosystem approach here? I mean, clearly this is going to get integrated into most products and services. There, there, there was a time when people used to talk about mobile companies or say, I'm, you know, we're a mobile company. And, no one would say that today because it would be like crazy not to be able to access it through mobile. And I think that's happening with AI very quickly. Like we're already going from the realm of, you know, someone saying they're an AI company to every company having AI built in as part of it. Um, both as, I mean, most chiefly as like products and services the company offers, but also as part of the internal workflow of the company. You know, you hear all the time people say, well, our developers without Copilot or without ChatGPT would just be like way, way less productive. And we're building all these great custom integrations and doing all this stuff and whatever else. Um, I think it's a technology that rewards a lot of experimentation. So it works really well for some things and not, not really well at all for others. But you want people to just try it quickly and adapt. And companies that are doing that are finding the most success. Also, uh, it evolves very quickly. And so things that weren't possible this year might well work next year. And so it like it rewards continually retrying things. And then finally, it's a technology that uh, this is now not as much the case as it w was a year ago, but the experts are very often wrong. So the people who often succeed in developing the use cases are the people who are new to AI and don't come with all the sort of preconceived and now wrong notions from the past. What what is the what is the pattern that you tend to identify uh, in in that in that issue? If you have been spending from like 2015 to 2021 working on AI, you have a lot of like battle scars that are well understood and well deserved, uh, and now like a totally new set of things are possible. And a lot of the things you might think about, like eh, everything's got to be our own trained model and our own weights and our own fine tuning and whatever else. And someone else is like, I'm just going to put it in the prompt of GPT-4 and see what happens. Yeah, it's actually it's interesting you you even bring that up. We've done a bunch of experimentations of can you just can you can you you know sort of effectively system prompt your way through what a lot of you know what you would have trained an, an entire model on, um, and you either get the, the same results or better because actually GPT-3.5 or 4 understands way more than what you might develop in your own model. And, and then thus the edge cases, you know, get solved way better because you have a much more, um, you know, ge generalizable model. And so uh, we, we've seen that a lot in our, our use cases. And I think it's a, it's a kind of a good, it's a good way for enterprise to be thinking about this is sort of, it's not inherently beneficial to just do your own training and, and have your own model. Um, there's a lot of leverage in, in actually using something that, that's much more horizontal and then, and then tuning it on the edge. Um, what, um, uh, so when you think about the enterprise use cases, how, how are you picturing the human relationship with AI in, in a workplace environment? So, you know, GitHub Copilot, you know, kind of the canonical example today of AI supercharging productivity. I mean, we've, we have engineers internally that would claim 30 or 50% yeah. increase in, in productivity. Um, how are you seeing that? And, uh, and how well do you think that extends and extrapolates to other areas of, of productivity in, in the enterprise? I mean, coding has definitely been the biggest hit so far, and it's the, also the thing that tool developers have put the most effort into, and there was like a lot of training data for it, whatever else. But I expect, we are starting to see that happen in a few other areas, and I expect that by this time next year, there will be like co-pilots for other types of knowledge work that are as as much of a productivity gain. Do you have a sense of, of is, that, um, is that something where we as individuals will get just more done per hour and and then we accelerate to then the next project and then and then sort of 
that becomes a metric of productivity yes. or yeah yes but also i think there is a qualitative change that comes from being able to work more effectively and do more in a small period of time like if you think of our own context window there's only so much we can like keep in there and as we get tools that let us operate at higher and higher level of abstractions we're able to just think of new ideas and do new things the quantitative time savings bring about a qualitative change in terms of the things we can even think about yeah yeah, there's um, uh, it's it's super interesting. So uh, I you know I think in the valley especially there's been this ongoing conversation. We'll get into maybe regulation in a second, but um, you know how what does this mean for the future of jobs? And um, and you know there's sort of one I, I think very myopic scenario that that is, is you know people people think about, which is well if I used to write that email or I used to design that thing and AI now does that, then then you know where is my role in in this um, uh, in this experience? Um, I think the much more uh, optimistic version of that is kind of what you just alluded to, which is actually what if the work itself is just qualitatively different? So instead of I, I spent all my time designing one thing and it better be the exact right thing and then that's the how the project then like goes on to the next step, what if I design 50 things and, I, and that actually completely changes the underlying thing that I'm building or designing or launching or releasing or brainstorming about? And now you have all of this um, intelligence that, that's brought to bear for a small task or a very big task that just lets you have more output, lets you do more, lets you serve the customer better, lets you build better products, lets you actually brainstorm things that you wouldn't have been you know, able to come up with previously. Um, and in that case, anytime we see some kind of productivity gain um, or even efficiency gain, actually it usually produces more jobs because the demand for whatever that underlying thing that you're producing actually goes up because it's better and then your organization or team or department actually needs even more people to go and fulfill whatever that demand was. So, uh, where do you land on this spectrum? I know that's like the most leading question of all time, but like, what, like, how do you think about it? Um, you know, as you as you think about what the role of AI in in the workplace is. Yeah, uh, I think there are going to be way more job, way better jobs in the future, way more, like, way higher quality of life, way more wealth in the, any way we could possibly understand it, but. It is going to be really different and that is like not great consolation to anyone who's like losing their job of today and that's going to happen like that 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 is happening already in a small degree and i expect it to accelerate uh, i think like human desire creativity all of that is, is it's like quite limitless and we're just going to find amazing new things to do and we're going to be net happier but it is going to be disruptive and it's going to be different yeah, I think um, uh, there's uh, uh, there, there's a, a paradox that, that some folks in the Valley talk about, this, this concept of Jivon's paradox, which is as you make an underlying um, you know, part of a supply chain more efficient, the demand actually goes up disproportionately for, for the thing that that supply chain was related to. So if you make um, you know, steam engines much more efficient, um, it's not that we use less steam, it's actually that we ship even more things because now it's much more cost effective to move things through, you know, through steam engines. So, um, so I think AI actually has that kind of impact, which is, uh, which is, you know, in one sense, it makes somebody maybe 30% more productive, but that actually is the difference between an entire new category of customers being able to leverage whatever that underlying service is. So, you know, you imagine a website to the designer that's able to be, you know, 30% more efficient because they can use AI to help them build websites. That doesn't necessarily mean that there's just the same amount of demand and now there's 30% fewer website designers. That actually could mean that there's a 3x increase in demand because there's a threshold that you reach where there's so much more input, uh, inbound demand for that, that underlying service. So I think, um, I think it, it basically is a bet on what, what do you think, how, how dynamic do you think our economy is and how um, maybe artificially constrained are some of these markets to begin with. And if you could make them more efficient, you'd actually see a lot more demand you know, for those underlying services. Yeah, that I, I think there's so much more demand than we realize, and we're gonna find that out pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, you you guys saw this with um, I don't know if you have any anecdotes on GitHub Copilot for this, but there were a lot of conversations of well, does this mean we'll need fewer engineers? And I would actually argue that the vast majority of companies on the planet cannot get anywhere close to completing their product roadmap. Um, so if they could make their engineers produce more code, they'll build more things. Yeah, that's clearly that has clearly been true. Yeah. This does then intersect with the regulatory side because we have to make sure that obviously we have an environment that you know both companies feel comfortable using these AI models. Um, we have to you know ensure that we're we're thinking through what the future of um, of the the labor force looks like. How are you seeing the regulatory landscape? Do you have 
Um, do you have any kind of views of where we end up in terms of, of is there you know, a single agency that, that has an overarching view of, of AI? Does it get embedded within all the existing agencies? You spent a lot of time in Capitol Hill, you know, obviously having those discussions. I think it will be embedded in lots of agencies, lots of different ways in the short term. You know, FDA will come up with rules about how we use AI for medical things. Uh, the, for example, and other agencies will do similar things. And we'll need new laws about how we deal with the persuasion capabilities of these models or the enhanced cyber attacks capability of these models. And then, and there's this other question of when the models get really, really smart that present where they present like truly global significant risk, how we're going to think about that. And something like that involves real global coordination. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any country really kind of uh, be the flag bearer of what that looks like? Uh, I think the most exciting thing is that it's like many countries being willing to work together. I did a big trip around the world earlier this year and a lot of countries really sophisticated thoughts really care but the the willingness to cooperate is, I haven't worked on other issues in this way but at least from what I've heard it's like much greater than normal. Yeah. And in terms of uh, data privacy, um, protecting the underlying data, obviously um, OpenAI has been a steward of, of uh, again, you know, making sure no, no customer data is trained uh, you know, for enterprises, uh, really making sure that, that there's a high degree of, uh, of, of compliance on, on how the data is used. How do you, um, where do you think we're at with the underlying, you know, let's say, uh, you know, compliance regime that's out there for how we should think about AI regulation from a privacy standpoint, because that's again one of these these big limiters that that large enterprises think about before they dive full full in on this. The honest answer is no one knows yet. Like we're gonna we're still in the in the realm of developing that as we go. It's uh, both in terms of like what the law should be, but more just like what the consumer expectations, and it, it's still unclear. Do you think society adapts more or does government regulate and, and tighten things up um, in this? The usual bet is society adapts more. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I, yeah, I think if you look at what's going on in US Congress right now, um, I bet more on society. So, um, uh, so I, think, uh, I think society will, will establish the parameters of, of what you know, we think the role of AI is. Um, and, uh, and then I think government will, will kind of you know, have, to, have to be secondary to that. But um, we're, we're kind of all looking to you to, to actually make sure we land in that place. So, um, uh, so okay, all right, you're, you're feeling confident that we can, we can get there. Good. All right, last question is, um, is, so the stated mission of, of OpenAI is obviously to sort of usher in this AGI future. Um, I would love if, if you could kind of give us a, you know, if, if you can give us your, your, uh, your QBR update on how are we doing against uh, against our AGI timeline, um, are you seeing promises of of what that looks like? Um, you know, when when do we all get to just spend our time painting and um, and have food getting made for us? Um, I mean, we're like marching along pretty well. I still expect that by I I don't think it's quite right to frame this as like there's this one moment where we all agree we've like crossed the AGI threshold. I think there will like we'll get to something, and some of us will say it's AGI, and some of us won't, but we'll be like, yeah, whatever this is, it's like pretty. It's significant, and then it'll keep going and keep going and keep going, and we'll find out that it can go quite a lot further than some of us thought. Um, but I would say, like, you know, by the end of this decade, I expect something that's like quite impressive, and by the end of the following, I expect something that's like super, super impressive. And what will, how will we know? Do you have a sense of how we'll know as, as you know, just a general user of technology when we've crossed over one of the thresholds? Uh, I mean, the thing that I personally am most interested in is when it can significantly, significantly increase the pace of human scientific discovery. I think that has this huge impact on all of our quality of life. So that, that'll be like when we get there, I would say that's like past the AGI threshold, but that's certainly a super important thing. What is, um, uh, just to maybe bring this home, um, uh, you as uh, just an end user of ChatGPT or AI generally, what what are you what are your go to things? Um, how how like you know give us the 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 best practice lesson of uh, what the day in life of, of Sam on uh, on OpenAI is? You know, this weekend I'm gonna like code up a little thing, uh, just as like a personal project I want for my house, and I bet with ChatGPT I will do something in 30 minutes that would have taken me a day. I'm out of practice and I don't know the libraries, but that would have taken me a day before. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, any other uh, fun personal uh, examples that you're running into? 
I think summarizing like huge volumes of email is a very underrated thing. We're, we're seeing this uh, with obviously documents, but customers are, are wanting to take literally millions of documents and, um, and be able to compress them into um, what, what is the you know, ultimate most important clauses of that document or how do we extract metadata from it or how do we write a summary? So um, that's- a, We'll get that token. We need million token uh, uh, limits. So if we can, if we can get that. What, what, how do you see that? Can you give us an update on the cost curve that you're seeing? Steeper than Moore's Law. Okay. Everybody can expect lower AI prices in uh, over time. That's for sure. Well, well, you know how like everybody is always like, when can I have an iPhone that has two days of battery life? And the answer is never because the iPhone will just get like more powerful to still use one day of battery life. Like we will have much cheaper versions of GPT-4 and people will love that. But I think there will be a big role for spending more on more intelligent, bigger, more powerful systems. What if we just promise if you can just make like GPT-4 100x cheaper, we won't ask for more than that? Uh, you can't promise that, okay. but. All right, well. Uh, you want, you want, you want the better models, I'm confident. Stay tuned uh, for more announcements on what we're doing with uh, Box AI and how we've incorporated OpenAI technology into the platform. So with that, thanks, Sam. What an insightful conversation on the future of AI in the enterprise. Next, we'd like to share with you our plan to add a new dimension to our workflow portfolio to address more sophisticated business processes and content automation. We are expanding into a new area for Box and also building on our native no-code workflow solution, Box Relay, and native eSign solution, Box Sign. Hi everyone, I'm Vaishnav, Director of Product Marketing. I'm Nirmal, I run product management for workflows at Box. And we're here to talk about content automation and workflow, an area that's seeing a lot of consolidation lately. Now, expert analysts like IDC and Gartner are recommending organizations move away from point solutions towards an integrated platform. And we're seeing other vendors in the market slowly but surely react. For example, content management tools are now adding native e-signatures. Workflow vendors are integrating eSign into their no-code tools, and eSign tools are expanding up and down the value chain, adding contract management. So Nirmal, what does this convergence of e-signature, workflow, and content management mean for us at Box? To be candid, this is not news to us. We have been very ahead of the game in terms of offering all these capabilities on a single platform ever since we added native signatures with Box Sign over two years ago. And in a way, all these market moves validate Box's strategy of ad addressing the entire content journey. And this has enabled our customers to use Box and standardize Box to power their mission-critical content-centric use cases. Vaishnav. I know you've been visiting a lot of our customers lately. What are you hearing from them? That's right. I've been speaking to a lot of customers, and it's really exciting to see the tons of document workflows that they are automating on Box. For example, with Box Relay, our native no-code automation solution, customers are able to ensure content flows seamlessly from creation to collaboration to review and approval without falling through the cracks. A pitch deck is a great example as it goes from product and marketing teams to sales and customer-facing teams. Then, once we added Box Sign, customers extended that process to e-signatures right where their content lives on Box without having to upload the document to a standalone e-sign tool. Take custom documents like statements of work, for example. Users are able to collaborate easily with internal and external stakeholders and finalize the document prior to sending for e-signature all on Box. And on the other hand, for fairly standard documents that get sent out frequently, teams leverage templates in BoxSign and send them out for signature. And these templates come in different flavors. For instance, publishing the template online for anyone to sign, sending the template in bulk to hundreds of people, or sending the template right from within a third-party application like Salesforce or a custom application. Oh, and one more thing. All the content across all of these workflows is always stored on Box, classified with Box Shield, and retained with Box governance as needed. In fact, our customers have tons of these document workflows active on a daily basis. And this allows them to drive material business impacts, including cutting costs, accelerating digital transformation, and reducing complexity. 
For example, customers like Mantech and Lionsgate power high volume eSign use cases with the Sign Salesforce integration, batch send, and ready sign links. Shriners Children's Hospitals improved clinic utilization by streamlining their patient onboarding using the Sign Relay integration. And customers like the USDA and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand drive internal and external business processes at scale. So, Nirmal, as our customers reap the benefits of being able to create, collaborate, review, sign, and automate their entire business process all on box, they naturally want more, of course, especially since they're grappling with point solutions in the area of document generation I hear. In a sense, it feels like deja vu from a, a couple of years ago when they were struggling with e-signature point solutions, doesn't it? You're absolutely right about this. Our customers, like two years ago when they were dealing with e-signatures, they are today struggling with the complex workflow of stitching together document generation into their existing workflows. And we hear you when you say a point solution in your tech stack adds complexity both for workflow creators and end users. There's a lot more work for your IT and operations team in cobbling together workflows across separated tools. There's a lot more manual step for your end users often having to export and upload documents across tools leading to unnecessary human errors. Multiple tools also means data getting siloed across multiple applications, leading to more time and effort being spent reconciling version conflicts and duplication of data, all of which slows down your business. And of course, who wants to deal with even higher business risks resulting from inconsistent security and compliance setting across these tools? There has to be a better way to work. And that's why we are super excited to announce native document generation in Box. Box Doc Gen is a brand new capability in Box, enabling you to automatically generate custom documents on the fly from multiple data sources. Feed it a template, map your data sources, and boom, comes out professional documents in the format you need, right in Box, ready for your next step in your workflow. No exporting, no uploading, no typos, and more importantly, no headaches. Let's now double click on the types of use cases native document generation unlocks. Broadly speaking, there are two high volume use cases. The first one being documents that needs to be generated and signed. For example, NDAs, contracts, invoices, proposals, and more. The, the second category being document that needs to be either shared with stakeholders like service notifications to your entire customer base or stored for reference like inventory reports that needs to be generated on a weekly cadence. Now, each of these documents is dynamically generated starting with a template with different types of placeholders and tags. And data from a variety of these sources needs to be plugged into these tags to create the final document. These data sources can be of third party or custom applications. For example, it could be customer information from Salesforce, inventory information from an ERP application, or employee titles from your HR databases. The best part is data can also come from box metadata to include things like expiry dates, contract values, and more. You know what's better? You can actually mix and match these data sources. That's awesome. I'm, I'm honestly really excited that we're adding document generation onto Box, and I can't wait for this to be in the hands of our customers. Talking of which, could you give us a sense for what's coming and what our customers can expect to see? Sure thing. We are planning to launch a private beta for Box Doc Gen this spring with two components. The first component is a Box Doc Gen add-in for Microsoft Word that will enable users to build document templates with these embedded tags. The Box DocGen add-in will have support for different types of tags, including text tags, image tags, table tags, conditional logic, and computations. It will also support Box Sign tags, so you can prepare the document template and send for doc generation and e-signature in one go. The second component does the merging of data from different sources with the template to generate the final document. And for this component, we're taking an API first approach so you can streamline high volume use cases at scale. 
The DocGen API flexibly com combines information from multiple data sources and generates the document in several formats, including Word and PDF. As I mentioned earlier, we are planning to release both of these components as a part of our private beta next spring. For those who are interested, please be in touch with your account rep and we are very excited to work with you all. With that, enough talk. Let's see a quick demo of Box Doc Gen in action. And we're back with Golden Blue in the same wealth portal built on Box and augmented with AI. Now let's take a look at how Golden Blue leverages Box Doc Gen in this portal to automatically generate new, customized documents. And when coupled with Box Sign, get signatures as needed. Let's start with Clio, our client. As you saw earlier, she just reviewed a new quarterly report. That file was automatically generated by Box Doc Gen and includes elements like the cover page with golden blue branding, custom tables with computations, and graphical elements showing client portfolio details. Box Doc Gen merged data from the client database into a document template to dynamically generate this report. Let's take a look at how the Golden Blue team made this happen. Oprah is the client operations manager at Golden Blue. She leveraged Box Doc Gen to create a process that generates the quarterly report for all clients. On the left is the base document she started with, and on the right is the final report that was generated by Box Doc Gen. To go from base document to generated report, Oprah followed some simple steps. First, Oprah accesses the base document in Box. This file contains the text, branding, and boilerplate details that are included in every client file, including this new quarterly report. With the Box Doc Gen add-in in Microsoft Word, Oprah is able to edit the base document and transform it into a Doc Gen template that will ultimately generate each client's report. She does this by first loading some sample data from the Golden Blue Client Database which gives her access to all the types of data she can work with to generate the final report. Now that she knows what types of data are available, Oprah places tags onto the document. These are placeholders where client-specific data will eventually be plugged in. She starts with the text tags for name, address, etc. She then adds a table to show details of all investments made and their returns. She can even add custom computations to show aggregated results, even though those aggregations aren't readily available in the client database. Finally, she adds image tags where pre-generated graphs will be placed. She can do all of this without actually writing any code. Once Oprah is done editing the base document to achieve the desired report formatting, she saves it as a doc gen template back in the box. And finally, Oprah works with IT and the client database admin to create a backend job that runs quarterly. This job calls the DocGen API to generate client reports by merging their info from the database into the DocGen template. The generated reports are then moved into each client's quarterly reports folder, which is where Clio was able to review hers. Now, another DocGen example this time with special guest Box Sign. As we shared earlier, Clio has decided to add retirement services to her account. Her advisor initiated this process and sent Clio a new contract to sign. Clio receives a new task in the Wealth Portal. It's time to e-sign the new contract. This contract was also automatically generated by Box Doc Gen. It contains the list of services Clio has subscribed to as well as her personal information sourced from the Golden Blue Client Database, plus a contract clause specific to residents of California, where Cleo lives. Cleo is satisfied, so she e-signs the new contract, which she can do right within the portal with the embedded signing experience, powered by BoxSign. Her signed files are saved right back to her client folder in Box. Let's take a behind the scenes look at how Oprah set up Box Doc Gen to generate contracts. She again started with a base document and leveraged the Microsoft Word add-in to insert text tags to transform it into a Doc Gen template. Now, Oprah just needs a few last touches to finalize the template. First, she adds conditional logic, which inserts specific language based on each client's address. 
Here, the clause that's specific to the state where clients reside is inserted. In Cleo's case, she saw the clause for California residents. Then, Oprah adds in box sign tags. These tags will become fields that clients, such as Cleo, will be asked to fill out when signing. This seamless integration of box doc gen and box sign saves Oprah significant time and effort with one tool to configure both document generation and e-signature. And that's not all. At different points in this process, Oprah leveraged Box Relay to move templates and documents, classify sensitive content with Box Shield, and retain signed documents with Box Governance. Thanks to the Content Cloud and its tightly integrated content automation tools, Oprah was able to build a process that addresses the unique needs of her organization. And with that, you've seen how Box Stock Gen allows Golden Blue to generate personalized and custom documents at scale and easily get signatures on documents where needed. With Box, Golden Blue is able to deliver a seamless experience for their clients and a simpler, optimal workflow for internal operations teams. Hope that gave you all a great sneak peek into what's coming in the private beta. But that's not all. Later next year, we'll round up the overall doc gen solution by supporting doc generation as an outcome in Box Relay, enabling you to automate end-to-end -end document workflows in Box Relay. Not just that, we will also add doc gen to our box for Salesforce integration, enabling you to not only generate documents directly in Salesforce, but also send for signatures using Box Sign with content securely stored on Box and surfaced as needed for Salesforce users. You know what? The fun doesn't stop there. With all the four capabilities, Box Metadata, DocGen, Sign, and Relay, all on Box, you can now automate across various use case patterns. For example, you can combine Box DocGen and Sign to auto-generate a purchase order and send out for signatures directly from Box. Best of all, you can combine all of them together to collect information from file request metadata generate the right type of NDA using Box Doc Gen, and send out for signatures using Box Sign, all orchestrated by Box Relay. That sounds pretty incredible, right? Absolutely. This is super flexible and will be a great fit for the use cases that I've been hearing from our customers. In fact, I bet a lot of them can put the solution to use right away. So to circle back, with Box Doc Gen, we are solving challenges you face today with your standalone document generation tools. With native template authoring and tight integrations with the rest of the content cloud, including BoxSign, we keep things simple for your IT and ops teams as they manage document workflows. With storage, access control, and permissioning all centrally handled in Box, you don't have to deal with siloed data or fragmented user experiences. And just like with everything else on the content cloud, Box Doc Gen comes with Box's strong security and compliance, significantly reducing your business risk and giving you peace of mind. With that, let's bring back Diego. Thanks, Vaishnav. Now I'd like to bring on our security product team to talk through what we are doing to address endpoint security and ransomware concerns. And after that, we have Brad Arkin, Chief Security and Trust Officer at Cisco, joining Julian Soriano, Box's Chief Information Security Officer, for a conversation on securing the future. Hey everyone, my name is Manoj Jasnani, and I'm the VP of Product Management for Security and Compliance Products at Box. And I'm Daphne Zhao, Director of Security Products. Today, we will highlight the innovation Box has delivered and is looking to deliver to help you protect your mission critical content. From sensitive customer information to the product design documents kept on your newest Box Hub, to the press release your PR team wrote with the help of Box AI, Box Security Products can help you ensure frictionless content security and compliance. And it's a good thing they do, Manoj. While budgets are tightening and every dollar counts in the current environment, the cost of a data breach just continues to rise. Not only can a breach massively disrupt business processes and cost millions of dollars, but can also expose sensitive customer PII or personally identifiable information, which causes a whole new set of issues. Now with 50% of data breaches involving customer PII, increasing cost of regulatory penalties, 
and the reputational damage associated with sensitive customer data being compromised cannot be ignored. And it's not just the bad guys that are creating challenges for the organizations. Over the last two years, more than 17 new countries enacted data privacy laws with countries like Indonesia recently passing their first personal data protection law. From California to Virginia, state governments continue to pass privacy laws requiring greater transparency and control over how companies collect and use personal data. The global landscape continues to become harder to navigate, and Gartner predicts that 75% of the world will have its personal data covered by privacy regulation by the end of 2024. Complying with federal, state, international, and industry-specific data privacy laws and regulations are an increasingly important requirement for global organizations. With the proliferation of state privacy laws coming into effect, you can rely on Box to maintain robust compliance and privacy controls built into our products to protect your customers' personal data. Speaking of our products and capabilities, some of you may recognize this slide by now, but for those who don't, this is our content protection framework. This framework covers the comprehensive set of security controls Box provides your content with, including identifying where sensitive content lives and how it's being used, protecting against data leakage, either intentionally or accidentally, detecting threats such as account takeover or malware, responding to and recovering from abuse and attacks, as well as zero trust access controls developed upon the CISA Zero Trust Maturity Model. It's been a busy year for the security and compliance teams at Box, and we are constantly improving and expanding our security tools. Just to name a few, we are rolling out new security measures to harden our most critical users, the admins, against the attacks targeting them. We're providing greatly enhanced visibility into your users and content with admin insights. We've refined the algorithms underlining our most advanced threat detection, such as anomaly detection and malware deep scan, improving accuracy and reducing false positives. We're also expanding our retention capabilities in box governance, giving you the ability to create retention policies driven by Box Shield classification labels, so as to better manage your content throughout its life cycle. Whether you need to meet specific industry regulations or international privacy standards, we're committed to providing you a solution that meets your global compliance requirements. Box has achieved a number of certifications, such as ISO, HTS, FINRA, and more that demonstrate our commitment to security and compliance. That's where we've focused over the last year. Manoj, let's shift gears and talk about what's next for Box Security. Sure thing, Daphne. As we look at the problems our customers are facing, three major standouts emerge. The mobile workforce is here to stay, and that means more endpoints and more vectors for attack. Finding solutions that can protect their organization's content starts with finding solutions to secure those new endpoints. Ransomware is a malware payload of choice when bad actors breach an organization, and it is essential to our customers that they have the means of detecting, blocking, and recovering from ransomware attacks. Finally, every year seems to increase the demands on security organizations with new threats requiring new tools or countermeasures, all creating a level of complexity that can become unsustainable. Our customers need ways to simplify their security without surrendering protection. So let's dive into the first challenge we're helping our customers solve. Handling the issue of widely distributed content, and more specifically, the threat posed by compromised endpoints being used to access Box. Compromised endpoints can breach even an otherwise secure organization with responsible employees, so it's critical to secure them. How can Box help? Well, while we have and continue to create more secure content cloud, we are also pushing our security capabilities beyond the cloud. By extending Box Shield's best-in-class content capabilities to the endpoints via integration with endpoint protection solutions, we're able to protect the content end to end. And we're making a major step forward in accomplishing this goal with our new integration with CrowdStrike. Box Shield will leverage CrowdStrike device risk signals to identify and block risky devices from accessing your box content. Box Shield will ingest a risk score from the CrowdStrike solution, which is determined from a number of variables, including built in OS security options, firmware availability, and CVE mitigations. Imagine a world 
where your workforce can create and collaborate on content from nearly any device anywhere in the world, and you can feel confident that they can be trusted with access to sensitive content. But there's a lot of other threats out there, aren't there, Daphne? Unfortunately, yes. Which brings us to our next challenge, the ever-present threat of ransomware. Ransomware is incredibly common, appearing 70% of malware breaches, and can absolutely cripple an organization. Just in the past few months, we've seen a wave of ransomware attacks on hospitals across the US, causing major damage and compromising people's medical information. And even more recently, we've seen a major data breach involving a file transfer service that resulted in the distribution of a huge amount of ransomware. I can go on and on, but the point being, ransomware isn't going away. To help you battle with the ever-growing threat, we have malware detection to alert on ransomware if it ever lands on box. However, oftentimes ransomware itself is not in box, but can still infect files in box drive, making them not accessible to other collaborators. That's why we are continuing to expand our ransomware protection solution to help further mitigate this critical issue. Our solution is building two parts, a self-serve content recovery tool to restore corrupted content from the ransomware attack, an AI-powered detection to identify anonymous file activities originating from Box Drive that indicate ransomware on a user's device, and stop damage to your files, like encryption, with our automated response, keeping it from propagating across the rest of your organization. Sequencing-wise, based on your feedback, we're building the content recovery tool first. This tool will enable you to precisely recover files by user, time frame, and more, and reduce time to recover from days or weeks to just a few hours. And we are looking at the beta starting soon. Stay tuned. I can't wait, Daphne. Last but not least, dealing with the often overwhelming task of balancing security with running the rest of the business. Seamless integration and smooth application of security is central to how Box protects your most critical content, since content protection shouldn't come at the expense of business operations. One of the best ways to reduce the burden on organizations is to enable more automation within your security controls. And it's not just the time savings. It can also enable faster, more effective mitigation of detected threats than a manual response. Previously, we provided admins with suspicious location alerts, allowing them to designate where their organization's content can be accessed from geographically and alerting them to violations. In the coming days, Box will offer admins even more control with the ability to automatically block users trying to access content from outside permitted regions. These automated actions will forcibly log users out and prevent access to content from within predefined, high-risk geographic regions, while also enabling admins to exempt users or groups to more precisely target the policy. Strictly security and compliance is the driving principle at Box and we'll continue to build solutions to the new content challenges and risks faced by you, our customers. We've moved beyond the cloud and extend the security parameter to keep up with the shifting business world. We'll continue to develop new capabilities to detect, respond, and recover from the evolving threats like ransomware. And we'll build our solutions with our users and admins in mind reducing risks without impeding productivity. And we aren't doing it alone. By integrating Box Security with our best-in-class security partners, we're able to go even further. Here we just see a small sample of our incredible partners mapped to our Box Content Protection Framework, and we will continue to find the best, most effective solutions in the market and ensure they are available with Box. Between our constant innovation within the current security space, and the continued integration of new third-party security solutions, we can guarantee that we are providing you with the most powerful and frictionless security and compliance solutions for protecting your content. Now let's look at some of the features we just covered in action. Meet Quix Inc., a leading smartwatch brand that's about to launch their 2023 flagship product. Let's take a look at how Quix leverages Box and other security integrations to protect their sensitive product data. This launch is more complex than ever. Quix has fully moved to a hybrid workforce, 
With so many new endpoints to secure, Chief Information Security Officer, Jane, is looking for new solutions to ramp up security and keep anything from interfering with the upcoming launch. Product launch content is stored in Box, and to increase security over this data, especially in light of the growing prevalence of endpoint devices, Box Admin Chris integrates Box with CrowdStrike, which allows Box Shield to automatically ingest endpoint risk signals directly from CrowdStrike. Box Shield can use these device risk signals from CrowdStrike to automatically block or terminate access from risky devices. Out-of-date software or certificates, firmware availability, CVE mitigation, and many more signals are used to protect the data in Box from compromised devices. Quix isn't just monitoring for compromised devices. Even trusted devices can accidentally add compromised content, including malware, into Box. To prevent this risk, Chris has created a malware detection rule in Box Shield. Box Shield enables Quix to detect the most sophisticated malware, no matter how it gains access to Box. With Shield Malware Deep Scan, even new and previously unidentified strains of malware can be detected, items that simple reputational scanning could miss. Another risk is bad actors who gain access to credentials and attempt to access sensitive IP. Chris sets barriers to these situations, including implementing suspicious location rules in Box Shield. These rules detect and block any Quix accounts seeking to gain access to Box from unusual locations. Chris sets the rule to monitor for access in regions outside their operating areas. This comes in handy when a user's phone, stolen while on vacation, attempts to access Box from a region where Quix isn't operating. The bad actor was blocked automatically, and Chris was able to restore the user's access safely and securely. Finally, Chris has a backup plan for if their sensitive content does become compromised. With advanced content recovery tools in Box, corrupted files can be recovered with precision and speed. Later, when an investor presentation deck is corrupted, Quix is able to recover this content in hours. Before Box, this would have taken days and had significant financial implications. It's not just external bad actors that are threats to Quix's upcoming launch. Chris also takes steps to prevent accidental or intentional deletion from internal users. Quix already has classification policies set up through Box Shield. Chris wants to reduce enterprise risk, so he leverages Box governance to create a retention policy targeting the Box Shield classification. Files classified as sensitive automatically apply the appropriate retention policy to the file. The integration of Box Shield and Box Governance also allows these retention policies to start without users, or Chris, having to think about it. The integration helps sensitive content stay safe and properly retained in every scenario. There you have it. Jane and the rest of the Quix team can rest easy knowing that Box is keeping their launch safe. With the integration with CrowdStrike, along with key advanced security tools, Quix is protected from external threats and internal leaks, and can focus their energy on sticking the launch. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julian Soriano and I'm the Chief Information Security Officer at Box. I'm super excited to be joined today by Brad Arkin, Chief Security and Trust Officer at Cisco. Brad, could you give us a bit of uh, uh, some information about your background, your experience, and what you guys are up to at the Cisco? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so at Cisco, I lead a group called the Security and Trust Organization. And some people get confused with the Cisco Security Business Group. And my joke is they make the money and I spend it. So pure back office, we're here to protect the company, protect our customers, make sure we're integrating security into the products we build, the services we operate, and then all the work we do around compliance. And I've been with Cisco about three and a half years. Before that, I was 12 years at Adobe, um, where I stood up what became the chief security officer role and built out the security team there. Great, thank you, Brad. And let's dive in. So uh, I'm gonna feel like a bit like a therapist here, but uh, we always, and that's a question you probably hear a lot, besides spending money uh, from the business, which we all do as CISOs apparently, yeah. 
Um, what keeps you up at night? What really like worries you uh, with the current trends and the cybersecurity threats that we're seeing out there? Yeah, so there are so many things that we've invested in and we need to make sure that we do a good job to maintain the level of security assurance that we've achieved up till now. And then we're always looking at higher up the hill, how can we climb better and, and do more there? And so the kind of projects that we're focused on right now around identity and access management, um, we're in a big push towards what we call passwordless. And so I wanna get away from human remembered long strings of random characters and just move towards you know touch ID, pass keys, anything FIDO2 based authentication. So that's like one of the big focus for the enterprise security side of things. Um, in terms of the products and the things that we're shipping out to customers, uh, we're always focused on what we call market access. And so customers want FedRAMP, they want ISMAP in Japan, IRAP in Australia. So that's a bunch of work that we need to worry about there. And then uh, one of the other things is around our build environments and how do we make sure we maintain the right level of security assurance and how we convert source code and artifacts into the firmware images that we ship out to our customers. So those are just a few highlights. There's like lots more work going on, but right. those are some of the big projects. Right, no, and it is the same on our end as I think social engineering attacks are really like exploding. I mean, if you look at the news, right, you see left and right things that keeps happening. And uh, at the heart of it is the social engineering attack, how you like build the right authentication, how you use the right mm -hmm. FIDO 2.0 protocol, passwordless is very important as well, right? So I think in education, the human risk factor is very important as well, how you like raise awareness to the employees, right, or the people on the ground so they don't get tricked by the social engineering attack. Yep. Um, so why technology leaders should be thinking about security, especially when it comes around unstructured data? I mean, is it something that is top of mind as well for, for you guys at Cisco? Yeah, so basically unstructured data, I think, is one of the squishiest things to try to lock down because if you have, you know, for example, HR data that sits inside of Workday and Workday surfaces a lot of tools that professionals can use to engage with and they work with the data while it stays within Workday. Then you just manage the controls around Workday, you've got your identity stack, that feels pretty good. If someone takes a download of an Excel file and they start slicing and dicing and sending out snippets of that to other people, mm -hmm. then it gets very hard to track where did it go, you know, is it being managed with the proper controls, um, do the people who receive it understand the care that's required to manage the sensitivity of the data from the source of where it started. Um, that, that's something that makes it a really challenging problem. Right, and yeah, and I think along the side, the complexity of like how distributed the data is, right? Mm -hmm. And as you say, we need to uplift some of the technology we're using, whether it's for authentication, authorization, how you like push those uh, controls to a distributed data makes it very complex. So that's one of the challenges for unstructured data for sure. So Brad, we have to talk about the digital elephant in the room, AI. Yeah. What a bit your thoughts around it and what are the risks that you're seeing or do you think it's really like the threat that everyone is like uh, talking about right now? Yeah, so a lot of people I think are banging the drum around fear, uncertainty and doubt and how AI is gonna help the bad guys be much more effective. And I'm a lot less worried about that. I feel like the bad guys are already making enough traction that we know what we need to do to go solve that. And AI doesn't fundamentally change things for their capabilities. And so what I'm most excited about is what it can help us as a defender to become much more efficient in the things we need to do and freeing up the humans that we have on staff today so that things that used to be tedious, repetitive tasks, maybe they won't have to do in the future. And so an example, the Security Operations Center, the idea that people were in the tier one of the SOC and just, you know, they pull the lever, they get a peanut, they're chasing tickets all day long. And the idea that we could use uh, large language models and machine learning mm -hmm. in order to automate that work away. And if they can suddenly become tier two SOC workers chasing much more interesting investigations, then we've got more time to chase things down fully to the end. And then the tedious like entry level work is something which we used to ask people to do for a year or two before they graduate but now we can put them into the more interesting work right away. Yeah. And so that's an example of something I think could be really fun. And so we're experimenting a lot of other things. So one other thing at Cisco right now, um, you know, we publish a lot of security bulletins and getting the formatting just right and everything else, it takes quite a bit of work, but that's actually something large language models could be pretty good at. And so we're not using it in production today, but we're experimenting with it and the results so far are encouraging. So I'm hopeful soon that that's another example of something that we'll be doing and, and it'll just free the people up to do work on more interesting problems. No, I totally agree. I think, uh, um, and if we rewind 10 years ago when we talk about cloud technology, everyone was like, kind of like, oh my gosh, this is like scary. But instead, 
using better compute, more compute to the advantage to secure your environment, protect yourself. Yes, the bad guys will have access to that technology, so it's a fair battle, but on the same side, right? I think you, you made a, exactly a really good point where you can scale better to yes. like more tedious work. You can like really like complement mm -hmm. or like augment staff, right? Uh, on the L1 type of work and look at operations maybe at a more complex level. So I think this is like a, really something that we're looking at as well. We, we try to, le we leverage AI before, we leverage AI even more uh, today. And I think the technology itself, it's sitting on regular infrastructure. So I think all the basics are still there, like yes. zero trust, least privilege, like authentication, like strong authentication, multi-factors. That's very important to keep in mind. So AI, I think it's actually an opportunity for security mm -hmm. more than a threat, so. Yeah. So thank you, Brad, for this insight. Very valuable, and I learned a lot from you around those topics, so thank you again. And if you would like to hear more from Brad and I on the challenges facing IT and security leaders, we'll be back on the box work stage later today during the breakout sessions. Head over to the conversation track to find the rest of our chat. Thank you all. What an interesting conversation about the intersection of IT, security, and AI. Many thanks to Brad Arkin for joining us at BoxWorks this year. And it was great to hear about the exciting announcements in security, including our CrowdStrike partnership and ransomware enhancements. As you saw throughout the keynote, we have several exciting announcements across collaboration, workflow, security, platform, and integrations. The Box Content Cloud with AI at the core is here to help you navigate the digital first future. That concludes this year's BoxWorks keynote. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you at the future Box event.